Hey, this is Dr. A with a ClinChem review on amino acids. So let's quickly review the physical and chemical composition of amino acids. So um, each amino acid is going to have a carboxyl group, which is this one right here, and an amino group, which is this one right here, and then an R group that's attached to a carbon. And the R group is unique, and that's what makes each amino acid different from the other. And um, amino acids will link up a carboxyl group to amino group um, by shedding water, uh, an OH molecule here and an H molecule there will uh, combine to form water and that will cause these two to link up in uh, the peptide bond and, and with every amino acid that links up. So this is obviously a dipeptide because it has two amino acids. Um, you get a longer and longer protein chain. So amino acids are also obviously the building blocks of protein. So here are a few amino acids, not really, I'm trying to get you to memorize them, but just to show you again, you've got that uh, amino group, carboxyl group, and then here's R group, and it varies. Uh, and then the R group can make it either nonpolar with a positive charge, negative charge, or polar. Um, so that, that does help determine some of the properties of that amino acid <clears throat> and then also as they link up um, areas of the of the protein that are polar nonpolar or might be positively charged or negatively charged so um, as a review again um, amino acids will link up so these little each of these around represents an amino acid and to form proteins and um, as they link up into our groups interact with each other um, they will start forming um, uh, their secondary uh, structures which can be alpha helixes or beta uh, pleated sheets or random coils. Um, so in the, the in the primary structure it's basically the sequence of amino acids in which you know which ones come when um, and that then of course determines the secondary structure and then as these fold they form a tertiary or three-dimensional uh, structure. Um, so every protein has at least their that tertiary three-dimensional protein uh, structure, but um, some of them will have a quaternary structure. So hemoglobin for, is an example here, uh, and that's because there's basically it's four proteins linked up together to make the heme molecule. So you have your two alpha and your two um, beta globulin chains there that link up. So there's four, and that, so that's a quaternary uh, structure. So um, there are 10 amino acids that are uh, needed by humans that can be synthesized by the body. Uh, usually the liver, it would be what's in charge of that. So the ones that we can make are alanine, aspargine, aspargine aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamic acid, glutamine, glycine, proline, serine, and tyrosine. And then there are 10 that, uh, amino acids that are essential, which means you have to have them part of your diet. Obviously, since amino acids come from proteins, it would be supplied from proteins in your food. So those are arginine, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. And then there were two recently identified amino acids, which were selenocysteine and pyrrolysine. They are, okay, so here's where it's worth mentioning, this is where amino acid analysis will come in handy, is there are some uh, amino acidopathies. So those are inherited enzyme defects that inhibit the metabolism of certain amino acids. There are over 100 diseases, obviously we're not going to list them all here, but generally they just cause severe medical complications because either the buildup of toxic amino acids or the buildup of the byproducts of amino acid metabolism in the blood. The most well known are PKU, phenylketonuria, tyrosinemia, alkaptonuria, maple syrup urine disease, isovaleric acidemia, uh, homocysteinuria, citrullinemia, arginosuccinic aciduria, and cystinuria. Those are the most seen, the most common. Uh, and they are screened for, by the way, um, at birth as part of the newborn screen, they're looking for a lot of those uh, enzyme defects because if we can catch them early, um, some of them can be managed. Uh, so how do we analyze, do analysis in the lab for amino acids? So first of all, the blood sample should be drawn after at least an eight, uh, six to eight hour fast. So maybe, you know, first thing in the morning before they eat. The sample is collected in a HEPA tube and the plasma is removed promptly from the cells. 
um, for the newborn screen, they actually usually use whole blood on a card, like drops of whole blood. Um, you need to take care not to aspirate the platelets in the white cell layer um, when you pull that plasma and you do not want to hemolyze plasma either. Then the sample is deprotonized within 30 minutes of sample collection. And then the uh, analysis is either performed immediately if the lab is doing those analyses or the sample has to be frozen at negative 20 to negative 40 and then sent uh, or kept back for analysis. Um, they, you can, there's a urinary analysis that can be form, performed on random specimens for screening and uh, the method of choice for screening for amino acidopathies is thin layer chromatography. Okay, that is your review on amino acids. Thanks for watching.